everybody, and welcome to the Universal Wrestling Federation footage of the Bad Street video. In Bad Street, the central theme in the Universal Wrestling Federation, Michael P.S. Hayes and the Freebird family ready for Devastation Incorporated. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Ross. Thank you very much for being with us in this exciting hour of the Universal Wrestling Federation. We'll be telling you about a tag team championship matchup you'll see in the hour in a few moments. You'll also see the big rematch for the UWF Television Championship. That'll be Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert defending against Savannah Jack. You'll see that match in the hour. Plus, Ted DiBiase will be along with us to provide some expert color commentary. We'll also see a report from Houston, Texas on an incident involving two great friends, Gary Young and Chavo Guerrero. We'll also see a feature on the upcoming cat fights in the Universal Wrestling Federation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we advertised here last week in the program, we're going to bring you a battle for the UWF Tag Team Championship in the hour. Terry Taylor and Gentleman Chris Adams scheduled to go against the combination of Iceman King Parsons and Sting. We're going to show you a report on that situation because it got to be very, very involved as we started to tape the program. The bottom line is Terry Taylor has not arrived to this facility yet. He's had some transportation problems, and it caused quite a stir, and I think this report will clear it up. I'll be back with some more comments after you hear this. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert began to protest immediately when Terry Taylor didn't show for the title bout. As you might guess, Gilbert wanted an immediate forfeit, but gentleman Chris Adams stood up for his partner and the belts by asking Gilbert and the UWF for a postponement of the bout. Please give him a little bit of time so that sure, we sure, can sure. carry on this tag team match as it should carry on. Ken Mantell came to the ring and backed up the gentleman's request by granting extra time for Taylor to make it to the taping. Iceman King Parsons, Eddie Gilbert, and Steen complained heavily, but to no avail. The decision is going to stand, and the match will take place later, providing Terry Taylor makes it to the building by the end of the hour. We hope to have that match in the hour. Hopefully, Terry Taylor will be arriving anytime, so we will hopefully have Chris Adams and Terry Taylor taking on Iceman Parsons and Sting for the Tag Team Championship just a little bit later in the hour. And when we come back, we'll show you that special report from Houston, Texas, after this brief timeout. Mom's magic meatloaf is weighing on you like a ton of bricks. Send the bubbles of Alka-Seltzer to the rescue, because speed is what you need to lift the heaviness off your stomach and relieve your heartburn and pounding headache fast. So for fast relief, let the bubbles rise to the occasion. Alka-Seltzer to the rescue. Try new extra strength Alka-Seltzer. More of what you take Alka-Seltzer for. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> Did what? I just invented the wheel. Uh, may I make a suggestion? Sure. Try these. What are they? Monroe Gasmatic Shocks. Oh. They'll give you the best ride ever. Guaranteed. Monroe Shocks Ooh. and Struts are the next best thing to the wheel. Guaranteed? In writing, pal. Ooh. Hey! Yeah, great ride! Looks like we won't have to reinvent the wheel for another, Yahoo. oh, million years. Hey, no wonder America rides Monroe! <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Universal Wrestling Federation. Recently in Houston, Texas, a major incident occurred. A very big surprise, as a matter of fact, when Gary Young and Chavo Guerrero had a tremendous altercation over a $39,000 check. Let's go back in time to the Sam Houston Coliseum and relive that situation. Gary Young, congratulations, brother. I tell you what, we don't have to wrestle. I'll split 19000 with you. You keep 19, and I'll keep 19. You can have the trophy one week. I can have it one week. It doesn't matter. What do you think, man? I mean, if you're from Houston and everything, it doesn't matter to me. 19 East, that's fair enough. Trouble. Everybody knows in Houston, Texas, that you are just like one of us. I'll tell you what, this is the first time that the Paul Bosch Trophy has ever been awarded. A lot of money, $39,000. If you don't mind, let's have one champion tonight in front of all these people. The best man win.
Ladies and gentlemen, you've just seen what happened. $39,000 two-ring battle royal here in Houston, Texas, the Paul Bosch two-ring battle royal. Chavo Guerrero, you, you won the, the battle royal. You had the $39,000 in the trophy, and all of a sudden you jumped by, behind by Gary Young. Well, you know, I feel like I've lost. I didn't lose anything. I got stolen. My money got stolen. My trophy got stolen, but I think like I've lost a dear friend. Gary Young, why? Por qué? Why, man? I mean, we've gone down the road together. We've, you've gone to my house to eat. I've gone to yours. We've partied together. I went up there and I, I said, man, let's agree. 18 for, 19 for you, 19 for me. You wanted to wrestle, we wrestle. And then what do you do, man? You come around, you double cross me, you stole. And you steal my money. You steal my trophy, but most important, you steal our friendship, man. The friendship is over with. Now, I'm getting a chance, man. I know that UWF can get my money back, but no, uh -uh. I'm going to get it back Chavo's way. You bit more than what you can chew, baby. You, bit a, you barked up the wrong tree this time, and I'm going to make sure that you remember it for the rest of your life. And it don't matter where it is, Gary Young. I've been hurt before, and I'll probably be hurt again, but I've never been done like you've done me, Gary Young. The war is on, brother. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard from Chavo Guerrero, and now we've got the chance to talk to Gary Young. And Gary, I mean, I was there. Chavo Guerrero won the two-ring battle royal. He won the $39,000, and then, you know, what, what's Bruce, going on? I don't understand. You know, I've been wrestling for a long, long time, and I have a very important match. Chavo Guerrero was a friend of mine. Yes. He was a friend of mine until we got into that two-ring battle royal, and I beat him for the $39,000. Everybody's singing, I beat him for $39,000. Then he, then he comes and he takes the check away from me. You know, he wants to be the kingpin. I had no choice. I had to do what I, had, I thought was right. So I got my check back the best way I knew how. Now, you know, I don't understand. You know, this is my most important match in my career. You know, I went out there and I fought hard. You know, and then to have somebody try to take it away from me who used to be a friend, I don't understand any of this. But nevertheless, I've got the $39,000 and I've got a lot of things to do with it. So. I've got to go, okay? You don't mind, I know. I'll see you later. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first from Houston, Texas, at 247 pounds, Gary Young. <laughs> introducing his opponent from Indiana at 249 pounds, George Weindroff. <laughs> this match, one fall or 10 minute time limit. Well, Gary Young may be $39,000 richer, but he sure has lost a friend and a lot of respect from a lot of people over what has happened in Houston, Texas. I really know what has come over, Gary. We'll be hearing from Chavo Guerrero a little bit later in this segment on a, on a pre-taped interview, but the fans in Houston, Gary's hometown, were quite shocked at his actions. You know, I've said many times he's got a great deal of potential. He's an extremely hard worker in the ring. Puts out a great deal of effort and is really honing his craft. But to do what he did to Chavo Guerrero was, was certainly not necessary and certainly was something that, well, he's going to live to remember a long, long time. And hopefully he'll regain his senses and, and apologize to Chavo and give him his money back. As a matter of fact, Chavo Guerrero had this to say. Now, Gary Young, I'm not going to make a big thing out of it. Evidently, you got frustrated because of the situation that you were in. You couldn't win in the type of scientific wrestling that you are, so evidently you're trying to go the other way. Well, you barked up the wrong tree, baby. Let me tell you something. You've been off more than what you could chew. Now, you stole my money, you stole my trophy, but more and most important of all, I'm coming after your hide, Gary Young. Great move by George Weingroff. Guerrero is incensed and rightfully so. Weingroff, legally blind, great amateur wrestling background. And look at Gary Young hold the tights. Gary Young blatantly held the tights of George Weingroff. Gary Young. Well, he has certainly changed, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll be back. And hopefully we will have the UWF Tag Team Championship on the line when we return.
right here in Kansas City at the Municipal Auditorium Tuesday, April 21st, 7.30 p.m. That will be Tuesday, April 21st. The date had been changed to Tuesday, and what a great card. Lights out. The fabulous Freebirds, Michael P.S. Hayes and Buddy Roberts, up against Devastation Incorporated, Wild Bill, and the Angel of Death. Also the UWF heavyweight title, Steve Dr. Death Williams versus the One Man Gang, and Steve Cox will be handcuffed. You're a typical American example of a flunk out, Dr. Death, because in Oklahoma, you majored in nothing but that silly football on the gridiron. Well, let me tell you right now, you got 502 pounds, and this is a man's game, and you better bring it all, because this is on the line in Kansas City. New date, Tuesday, April 21st. So listen, and listen good. The Freebirds, yeah, you talk once too often, Michael, and that was the biggest mistake you ever made, because now we've got Angel Mohammed teaming up with Wild Bill Irwin, and he's going to teach you an education, perhaps the difference between men and boys. Here's Betsy Reddy Betsy for Kansas Betsy. City. Let me tell you, you know, we're coming to Kansas City. Michael Hayes, uh, you don't like it because we're going to be walking right down Bad Street. You know, you say, Bad Street rules. Come as you are. Well, that's fine because we always come as we are. And the angel, <laughs> he's got something. Yeah. Oh, handcuffs. Yeah. Handcuffs aren't necessary. We'll just beat you. A nine-bout spectacular in Kansas City at the Municipal Auditorium, Tuesday, April 21st, 7.30 p.m. Lights out tag war, the fabulous Freebirds versus Devastation. Well, you know something? There's a boy running around here, a ball-headed Benedict Arnold, that thinks he really made a clever move, thinks he really made a step up in his life. Well, it's time to bring you back down, son. It's time to bring you around to reality. And that's what this bad street match will do. Because that means anything goes. And I'm going to bring my cowboy boots so I can bust that big watermelon head of yours and watch you bleed. And as you're bleeding, I'm going to start laughing at you. Now, I'm going to think about how you smiled at me when you turned on me. Then I'm going to start kicking your ribs. And I'm going to start spitting on you. And then Buddy Jack's going to be beating on Bill Irwin. And we're not going to stop till we teach him a lesson. A lesson you should have seen a long time ago. There's a lot of things people say you can do. There's a lot of things people say you can't do. But there's one thing everybody knows for sure. Nobody walks down Bad Street. You know what makes me sick? Hey, we're American born and American bred. And we're proud to be Americans. And here you got these geeks. Like, Akbar comes over our country with all this cash, and he gives them the money to Irwin, to Angel, who are born Americans. They're turncoats. I'll tell you what, the Freebirds are going to show you what happens to people like you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to try it one more time here for the UWF Tag Team Championship. If you join us at the first of the program, you know what's transpired. If not, Chris Adams has signed to go against and Terry Taylor against uh, Iceman Parsons and Sting, but Taylor has been detained due to transportation difficulties, and Kim Mantell has given the tag champions a little bit more time for Taylor to arrive. Now let's go to Mike Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, accompanied by Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, from St. Louis, Missouri, at 230 pounds, the Iceman, King Parsons. Also, from Every Man's Nightmare, at 260 pounds, Sting. Well, there's a look at the challengers for the UWF Tag Team titles. Come now, on, Ken Mantell, earlier in the hour, came out and discussed this situation with, with Chris Adams. And by rule, the UWF doesn't have a lot of latitude in these particular situations. And hopefully Terry Taylor will be accompanying Chris Adams. As I look back here at the opening from the locker room area, it is once again, and there you'll see him, Chris, Chris Adams coming to the ring alone, no Terry Taylor. I also see Ken Mantell making his way to the ring. This is a very bizarre situation, and hopefully we'll get it resolved here in just a few moments. What's up, gang? Hey, stop the music! Stop the music! 
to make our champions to either defend their belts or give them up. Chris, we've given you extra time. We all know that Terry Taylor's on his way, but those are the rules. Well, it's up to Chris, Chris Adams here. Mr. Mantell, I know that they are the rules, but I do have an option, right? Yes, you do. And can you tell everybody what the option is? You can either defend the belts or give them up. I can defend the belts on my own against... I I I'd rather defend the belt on my own than give it to you two punks. Any... Chris, Chris, Chris. There's two of them. Now, I can't recommend you do that at all, Chris. You're a friend of mine. Oh, Mr. Mantel, listen. I've wasted, I've wasted enough of my life. I've wasted the last three months doing you know what, Iceman, because you keep bringing it up. But I'll, t I'll tell you what. I am not going to give up. I know that my tag team partner, Terry Taylor, has a purely legitimate reason for not being here, and I want to fight for both of us. And I know that I've got, I may have a man right here, but I've got a buckweed right here, and I'll tell you what, I'll take both of you on. I want to take both of you on. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'm glad, I'm glad you're going to fight. I'm going to beat you like you stole stuff off my Cadillac, you jailbird. Well, Chris Adams, I'll tell you, you talk about courage. He has come to the front on his problem that he had. He has met every challenge head on. He has not avoided any issue. He has not avoided any reporters, anyone wanting to know his story. And he's not avoiding this challenge, even though Ken Mantell strongly advised Chris not to accept this situation. Unfortunately, in these particular situations, there, there's very few alternatives. And you heard both of them. He can defend the belts as signed, or he can forfeit. And it's certainly not a situation that the Universal Wrestling Federation wants to create. But in the same respect, Terry Taylor, who we understand has had some transportation problems, and is on his way. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Adams is defending both belts for the UWF Tag Team Championship. The match will be one fall or television time remaining. Well, there you hear it. I'll tell you, this is a very, very unusual situation. Chris Adams starting off with Sting, little shoving in. Adams with an arm drag takedown, and Adams setting himself for war. But Sting backing off very, very smartly there. Now, you got to wonder what kind of strategy is going to be employed here. Adams all alone, so quite obviously no one to tag. Eddie Gilbert at ringside, talking as usual. I believe if you ever got laryngitis, they'd have to have him institutionalized. Arm bar by Chris Adams. As I said, Adams has stood up to challenge after challenge in his life and in his wrestling career but this one just may be more than he bargained for adam's looking great here adam's inside cradle we can have a pin right here and sting kicks out and adam's back with the arm drag into the arm bar and there's a tag in comes iceman parsons and adam's is ready for it chris adams with those arm drags and that's three, and Iceman's on his back, and Iceman backing up. And right now, even though it's only one man, Chris Adams is proudly defending the UWF Tag Team Championship belt against two men. Here on what has to be 
de described as the unpredictable Universal Wrestling Federation. Adams with the arm twist. Once again, Iceman going to the mat. And Adams taking over on the Iceman. Don't forget, in the hour, we'll be telling you about some major upcoming events for the Universal Wrestling Federation. Also about next week's UWF program. We'll have that information for you later in the hour. I'll also be joined by Ted DiBiase a little bit later in the hour. We understand Terry Bam Bam Gordy is in the building. We hope to talk to him a little bit later as well. Great move by Chris Adams and this crowd. I'll tell you, it's almost like another tag team partner. They're really supporting Chris. Adams and he's controlling this situation. Adams with the arm bar. An Iceman wants to make the tag, and there it was. Well, thus far, Adams has been the ring with both Sting and the Iceman and has more than held his own. This match, one fall, or television time remaining for the UWF Tag Team Championship. Chris Adams defending both championship belts in this situation. As a result, if you just joined us, of Terry Taylor being late due to transportation problems. Hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. Boy, what an opportunist. They literally stole the UWF Television Championship from Savannah Jack, Eddie Gilbert with the help of the Iceman. And now it looks like they're in a perfect position to take the UWF Tag Team Championship because it's two awesome athletes, the Iceman and Sting, with hot stuff on the outside against one man. Chris Adams here on the Universal Wrestling Federation. Football tackle by Chris Adams. Adams with a nice move in the pinning predicament. Fergie down one, two, and Sting kicks out. Adams going for the pin once again. Got a one, two, and he's... Boy, that was close. Double leg pickup by gentleman Chris Adams. Adams once again in a pinning predicament, but Sting too strong in the lower body. He kicks out and he is reeling. And Sting back into the corner. And Eddie Gilbert, who prides himself on being a tremendous strategist and a great motivator of his arsenal, has got to be a little frustrated at this point in time because this is the golden opportunity. Side headlock applied by gentleman Chris Adams. A lot of action tonight in the Tulsa Fairgrounds Pavilion. Tuesday night, Sparta, Illinois, just outside St. Louis. Wednesday night, Chicago. And we'll tell you more about some big events. And there's a cheap shot. Typical Iceman Parsons. Cheap shot on the outside, bearing the knee into the kidney area of gentleman Chris Adams. And now Sting throwing Adams out through the second and third rope out to the floor. And Adams attacked by the Iceman on the outside. And his face ran right into the steel railing. Iceman Parsons with Eddie Gilbert's subterfuge. It's camouflaged, got the referee out of position. In the meantime, the Iceman just rammed Adams' head right into that steel railing. Referee Carl Fergie out there to help Adams back in the ring. And now Sting taking over on gentleman Chris Adams, ramming his head into that, the turnbuckles. Adams, his head struck against the metal railing on the outside, and now he is, he is being hammered. And this crowd, listen to him. The crowd here in Tulsa is coming alive in support of gentleman Chris Adams. And he so desperately needs that support at this point in time. The Iceman working on a fallen Chris Adams, a hurt Chris Adams. The taunts, the derogatory remarks, and Adams has been lacerated. It looks like just above the eye. Just above, I think, the left eye. I'm not real sure. But Adams has been busted open, needless to say, and referee Carl Fergie, because there's no partner, has got to take some special care in this. There's a, Adams busted over right over that left eye. And Adams with a very glazed overlook. And Adams is in deep trouble right here. 
and they are taking over on Adams who is losing blood by the moment. Sting and the Iceman made the legal tag and look at them, they're keeping Adams right in their corner. That's classic strategy, but there's no one to tag. Now they're sending him into Adams' corner where Terry Taylor would normally be. And now Sting right on top of Chris Adams hammering away at that laceration. And Adams is in such trouble here. The referee checking that laceration. I hope the referee uses a, a high degree of, of not letting this thing go too far. Don't be too lenient. Adams is losing a lot of blood and he has no partner. The Iceman and Sting seem to be enjoying what they're doing at this point in time. Eddie Gilbert does not have that look of concern any longer. Body slam and once again kicking away at the head of Chris Adams is the Iceman. The Southpaw from St. Louis with a big, big left hook. And Adams saying no, don't stop it. The referee's looked at it a couple of times now. Adams fighting back. Have you ever seen anybody with a bigger heart than Chris Adams is displaying on this evening? He is one half of the Universal Tag Team Champions. But Sting, the impressive youngster from Hot Stuff Stable, now really opening up on Chris Adams. Adams is bleeding profusely here on the UWF. There's the elbow. Sting goes for the coup de grace, and Adams moves. That would have been all she wrote right there, and Sting makes the tag. The fresh man's back in the ring. And surprisingly enough, they have punished and punished Adams. That's no surprise. What is a surprise is that they have not. I repeat, they have not gone for the pin. And look at Adams. Adams is, I don't know how much longer he can even get up on his feet. Adams with a, that's a dangerous look. Now look at Gilbert. Hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. Now that's, that is terrible. That's sickening on the outside. Gilbert getting involved now. And Adams is there alone. A headbutt by the Iceman, uh, once again, I think Fergie's just about ready to stop this thing. And I can't say as I blame him here. He cannot let it go on too long. Adams is where he is in a in very, very dear physical danger here. And the referee looks like he's getting ready to stop this thing. Adams holding on. Pierce Adams literally appealing with all his heart for the referee not to stop this matchup and the Iceman's kicking away. And how much longer can he go? And the roar of the crowd, ladies and gentlemen, Terry Taylor has just come into the building. Terry Taylor has just, he hasn't even set his suitcase down. Terry Taylor, without Halliburton, there's Terry Taylor with that metal suitcase. Terry Taylor, and that suitcase is a weapon. The referee calling for the bell. Taylor had just nailed the Iceman. He had just nailed Sting. Terry Taylor with that metal suitcase. The referee has called for the bell, but Taylor has saved the championship for his team. I think they've been disqualified because of that suitcase. Taylor retrieving the belts and now going over to see how Chris Adams is, but leaving and going to He's talking, Eddie Gilbert and his crew going right back to the locker room. Terry Taylor, man, he didn't get here any too soon. But in any event, Terry Taylor and Chris Adams are still the UWF Tag Team Champions and will be back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Universal Wrestling Federation. Two of the great fans here for Terry Taylor and gentlemen Chris Adams, and they 
They held on to the tag team titles by disqualification. I've never seen anything like that, Ted. Ladies and gentlemen, Ted DiBiase joining us. Ted, thanks very much. I know you're getting ready to go to Japan and the Far East, around the world, and it's an exciting time for you. It sure is. First of all, I'd like to say that was a very courageous effort on uh, Chris Adams' part. I've, I've never seen him fight so hard in my life, and they, they managed to hold on to things. And yes, Jim, I am getting ready. I'm gearing up to go on a, uh, an international tour. Uh, I've said this before the last time I was here with you. I have formulated the most strenuous itinerary that I ever have have laid out for myself in my entire wrestling career, and I've done it for a purpose. I'm going to go out and I'm going to face the toughest international stars in professional wrestling today to fine tune myself and to come back to the Universal Wrestling Federation for one goal and one goal only, and that's to go after and win the heavyweight championship. We'll talk about that, ladies and gentlemen, in the hour. One of the things Ted DiBiase is going to miss on his trip around the world is the upcoming cat fights, Ted. And uh, we're going to see if I want your comments on that but right now, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see a special feature on the upcoming cat fights. We're probably not going to see anything like a Ted DiBiase match, not a lot of scientific wrestling. But we may see some uh, lost clothing, perhaps, and maybe a little hair well, on the well, mat. Jim, I, I got to say, I really am disappointed that I'm going to miss this. I've seen a few fights with girls involved in my time, and the ones I've seen, there's been a lot of a hair been pulled out. There's been a lot of clothes lost, and there's no telling what these girls are going to wear to the ring, and there's no telling what's going to be left when it's all over. But you put those four girls in the ring at the same time, there's just no telling what will happen. No, exactly right. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to show you a feature now of the exciting Universal Wrestling Federation training camp. And, Ted, this is a great innovation by the UWF. I'll tell you what, this is the greatest thing that's happened. It's about time that something like this has come along. I've had a lot of young men, young athletes approach me during my career and saying, hey, where can I go? Can you help me personally, Ted? And I've been down there already, and I've, I've worked out with some of these young men, and, and I really am excited about it. I just, it's long overdue, but it's here now, and I think it's really great. And here's how you could get involved. When the temperature drops below 30, remember the spark plug that's tested to start Champion, we go to ridiculous extremes to test the reliability of our spark plugs. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Super Fight. You want to see the crowd tonight, just to kill. And now you can own the official Hagler Leonard commemorative sportswear by calling this 800 number. Get an official silkscreen t-shirt for only $15. Or this cold-blooded long-sleeve tee, just $18. And this no-sweat sweatshirt, a mere $25. Use your credit card to call and order your official Super Fight souvenir shirts now. Super Fight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Universal Wrestling Federation. A little bit later in this segment, we're going to show you a recap of this Devastation Incorporated Freebird situation. I'm glad I've got Ted here because, Ted, your thoughts on this situation, you have not only uh, been a member of Devastation at one time, I hate to bring up uh, old memories, but you've also been in the ring with most of the competitors involved in this situation. This is a situation that I'm glad I'm not involved in, Jim. Uh, I have no love lost for anybody that's involved in this devastation or the Freebirds. All of these competitors, you know, give credit where credit's due, they're all great, but they're all very dangerous people. And when they lock horns together, anything, I mean anything, can happen. And that's why we saw that Bad Street video, Bad Street Rules. We hope, ladies and gentlemen, and to have a few words. He's on his way to the ring now. Terry Bam Bam Gordy headed to the ring. Hopefully we will be able to hear from him. Bruce Pritchard is standing by. Let's go to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past few weeks, one of the hottest topics in the entire wrestling world today, and especially here at the Universal Wrestling Federation, is the feud between Devastation Incorporated and the fabulous Freebird. Now, Terry Bam Bam Gordy of the Freebird was not present. He was in Japan. He has cut his trip short to come back from Japan. His feud and Terry, we've asked you out here. We'd like to get a few comments from you on your feelings on the uh, feud with Devastation Incorporated. I didn't come here to talk, I come here to kick somebody's butt. Now, 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, all, the acquisition of Devastation Incorporated, the Angel of Death, and Terry, we know that the Angel of Death was a protege of the fabulous Freebirds. Your comments on his turn. All I can say is I'm ready to kick his too, anytime. Hey, listen, I cut my trip short from Japan just to come here and get a hold of Agbar's group. And let me tell you, and especially, especially that big, tall, 500-pound, one-man game. Like I said, I didn't come here to talk. You just get somebody in the ring, I'm ready to take one. I didn't say that, Terry. You know, one more thing. You know, we'd like to ask you exactly, you know, you weren't here. They hurt Michael Hayes, they also Buddy Roberts. Now, you know, your feelings on that. You know, you were not. Well, Terry Gordy has, he's not wanting to talk to anybody. I tell you, gosh almighty. Bruce Pritchard tried to conduct an interview there. Gordy manhandling him. And Gordy is the king of the ring, Teddy, so to speak, at this point in time, and you know him very well. I'll tell you what, Jim Ross, I've dealt with him personally. I have no love lost at all for the man. As a matter of fact, that's one man that nearly ended my career. I've never seen him so animate about getting somebody in the ring. And nobody wants to come in the ring, and who could blame them? Ladies and gentlemen, while they're trying to clear the ring, we'll check on Bruce. I hope he's all right. Uh, the referee's trying to converse here with Bam Bam Gordy. Fellas, I don't know if I step in the lion's den or not. No, I don't think so. He's not in the talking mood. It's obvious. He wants somebody in the ring. He wants a little revenge. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come right back with more exciting Universal Wrestling Federation action. Don't you go away. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first from Louisville, Kentucky, at 255 pounds, Marcus Hawk. Also introducing from Knoxville at 235 pounds, Ron Sexton. This match one fall or 10 minute time limit. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, Terry Gordy has not left. He was there talking with Ken Mantell and the referees. And Ted, this man is enraged. He has been pushed over the line. Jim, this man's insane right now. He wants to get a hold of somebody. And these two guys that are in the ring are at the, are at the right place, but it's the wrong time. Well, these two guys are here to wrestle each other, both making their debut here on the Universal Wrestling Federation, two finely conditioned athletes. And Gordy ramming Ron Sexton's head into that, to the timer's table. It's typical, typical Terry Gordy. It's typical Freebird style. You know, they get frustrated, they get mad, they're gonna take it out on somebody, and those Ooh. are the guys that happen to be there at the time. Gordy's clothesline. Remember, this match is Marcus Hawk versus Ron Sexton. Marcus Hawk just went flying to the concrete. Ron Sexton has been, he has been hammered, and I mean hammered by Bam Bam. Gordy is over the line. This man is out of control. He is seeing devastation incorporated in everyone he sees. And man, Ron Sexton, his head busted against that steel post, Teddy. Well, very obvious, obviously, Terry Gordy is making a statement right here and right now, and he's doing it, doing it in typical Freebird fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, the Freebird War with the free with Devastation Incorporated. What a situation! I don't even know what we Gordy still want to beat people up. Sexton's been busted open. Ron Sexton's been busted open. Gordy bringing him back in the ring. And these poor guys are going to wrestle each other. And there goes the referee. Man, it is a, there's trouble now. The, I'll tell you, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know who wants to go in the ring to stop this one. Sexton is busted open. They're calling for the bell. Hopefully we'll get some help up there. Terry Gordy has knocked down the referee. He's, knocked, he's beat up Ron Sexton. He's annihilated Marcus Hawk. And he's getting ready for devastation, Ted. This is too much. It's too much, Jim. There's no call for what he's doing. This is carnage. This is like a wreck on the interstate. There goes Ron Sexton on the outside. 
Gordy has ravaged everybody in and around the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, the television title is yet to come. We'll try to get Gordy out of the ring so we can have that championship match. And Ted DiBiase and I will be right back after this important announcement from the UWF. Guess who just got back today? The Mile High Boys has been away. Haven't changed and much to say. Right here in Kansas City at the Municipal Auditorium on Tuesday, April 21st, 7.30 p.m. Now that date has been changed to Tuesday, April 21st, the official date right here in Kansas City at the Municipal Auditorium, a sensational Universal Wrestling Federation event. Uh -huh. The Lights Out Tag Team War, plus uh -huh. for the UWF Tag Team Titles, Chris Adams and Terry Taylor versus Rick Steiner and Sting, and a Kansas City Street Fight, Savannah Jack versus Iceman King Parsons, and the TV title is on the line yeah. against Sam Houston. Oh yeah, Sam Houston so happy. All you people in Kansas City were hot stuff all star his career off in the first place. All you people were so happy when Sam Houston went to a draw with me and I told him he could have his match. He could have his match for the title right there. Well, he's going to get it, but I want to tell you something right now. I'm coming to Kansas City a little early. I'm going to brown, down around to the Brown's house, the Brown family's house. I'm going to have a little something to eat first. Then we're going to go on down to the matches. I'm going to take care of Sam Houston. Steiner and Stinger are going to come out the new tag team champions and then the Kansas City street fight. <laughs> we know what Iceman is going to do Savannah Jack. You know, Kansas City ain't never beat Missouri doing nothing. So I tell you what I'm gonna do for you, Rudy Poots. I'm gonna show y'all what a street fight match is all about with a real live Oreo. <laughs> you started it, sucker. Live with it. Can you dig it? Oh, have mercy. The Universal Wrestling Federation returns at Kansas City at the Municipal Auditorium on Tuesday, April 21st at 7.30 p.m. Now, that date has been changed. It's Tuesday, April 21st, the official date at the Municipal Auditorium. It will all start at 7.30 p.m. And a sensational UWF event, a lights-out tag war between the fabulous Freebirds and Devastation Incorporated. Also, UWF heavyweight title, Steve Dr. Death Williams against the 500-pound one-man gang. And the UWF tag team titles are on the line. Steve and Rick Steiner will be battling the champions, gentlemen Chris Adams and Terry Taylor. Well, thank you, Bruce. It looks like a who's who in professional wrestling here in Kansas City. You have a, a TV title match. You have a Kansas City street fight match. If you want muggings, massacres, melees, it doesn't matter. We have it all here, and it's on the 21st. Now, don't everybody make a mistake, because I'll probably be the first one to be there on the 20th. But I'm telling you now, I know it's the 21st, and Chris and I are excited about being there because we're going against the guys we beat for these titles, Sting and Steiner. They're out here screaming foul. It's not fair. It's not fair. You weren't a tag team entered in the tournament. Well, Iceman, you turned your back. You joined Hot Stuff International. Now you got to pay your dues. We're going to hang on to these titles right here in Kansas City. Right, partner? Right. We have a new name for Iceman, by the way, Buckweed. We'd like <laughs> you to come down and just call him Buckweed. that would do for us. Now, Steiner and Sting, two men who are moaning that we did not win the championships. Well, tough, because we did. And Steiner and Sting, Hot Stuff International, Eddie Gilbert, if you hang around outside the ring, Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Universal Wrestling Federation. Terry Gordy finally leaving the ring after he and Kim Mantell conferred. And next week here on the program, Bam Bam Gordy will wrestle a member of Devastation Incorporated right here. That, I guess, was the trade-out. Gordy has left the ring, but he will get what he wants right here next week. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing at 225 pounds from every girl's dream, the current UWF television champion, Hot Stuff, Eddie Gilbert. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a look at this week's UWF Top 10. At number 10, Iceman King Parsons. Number nine, Sam Houston. Number eight, Steen. Number seven, The Missing Link. Number six, Chavo Guerrero. Number five, Michael P.S. Hayes. Number four, Savannah Jack. Number three, Ted DiBiase. Number two, a tie, Terry Bam Bam Gordy and Steve, Dr. Ed Williams. The number one contender is the television champion, Eddie Hot Stuff Gilbert. And the UWF heavyweight champion, 6'9", 500 pounds, the one-man game. Iceman King Parts is on his way to the ring. This is a reminder, Michael P.S. Hayes, along with Motley Crue, Chicago, Tom Betty, 
Bob Seeger, Bruce Springsteen, Pat Benatar, Heather Locklear, and many more to T.J. Martell Rock and Bowl tonight in Los Angeles. Don't miss that. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger from Savannah, Georgia, at 250 pounds, Savannah Jack. This match for the UWF television title, one fall or television time remaining. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I, every time I see Savannah Jack, I think of Iceman's remarks. I inadvertently mentioned it was Iceman Parsons. I know that's who Savannah Jack wants, but Savannah Jack in the promise rematch, Ted, for the television title, it was stolen. Well, I'm sure he's fired up about that. You, you might as well call it the uh, the tag team TV title because it was definitely a, a combined effort on Eddie Gilbert's part along with uh, Iceman King Parsons. They obviously did steal his title from Savannah Jack and he's ready to get it back. Eddie Gilbert looking eye to eye with Savannah Jack, a man who held the television title for quite some time. Savannah Jack with that left and Gilbert down to his knee. And if Gilbert gets into a slug fast with this man, then he'll be one of the shortest lived champions of all time. Those stinging jabs. Gilbert is in trouble here at the very outset of this contest. Savannah Jack for the lateral press. Count of one, two. Eddie Gilbert can't punch this man, Teddy, I don't think. Not at all. He's very, he's not wise at all for him to try to go toe to toe with a man with the power that Savannah Jack has. He's gonna have to resort to be a little more cunning and be the fox that he's been in the past. Now, I hate to say it, Jim, but Eddie Gilbert reminds me of, of an old Ted DiBiase in that, you know, he waits and he waits and he waits till he gets the, uh, the opportunity. When the opportunity arises, he takes full advantage of it. Uh, it's not always the best thing to do, but it works. Just about out of air, to air time here, ladies and gentlemen. Not a lot of time left here in the program. Hope you'll join us tonight in Tulsa, Tuesday in Sparta, Illinois, Wednesday in Chicago at the UIC Pavilion, Thursday, Johnstown, Friday night in Minneapolis. Here comes Iceman. Wait a minute, here's Iceman King Parsons. Iceman Parsons, Carl Fergie calling for the bell, Iceman. Once again Should've attacking, known. and now the clothesline. What's he got in that? What's he got in that bag? That's what I was. What? He's got Savannah Jack. That's a hangman's noose, Ted. This it's a hang. He's hanging it. Oh, He's hang gosh, almighty. Jim Ross, I'm supposed to be unbiased, but I can't sit here and watch a man get double teamed. I'm going to hell. Ted DiBiase going to the ring. Iceman choking Savannah Jack. And Gilbert's holding the referee. Can Savannah Jack free himself? Savannah Jack being hung by the Iceman. And we're out of time, and we'll be back right here next week for more UWF action.